Creatures of the Night, it's your girl Tati. Now, an unrelated news to Ring of Honor. Cody Rhodes got bitch slapped by The Rock, and that was the highlight of my night. Now, let's talk about Ring of Honor. I can honestly say that I feel confident in saying, A, um, with what I've been seeing with Ring of Honor in the past over a month or so, they've been absolutely consistent. Like, I would not mind saying, hey, take out your um, $9.99 and purchase, you know, at least a month of the Honor Club and see what's going on. They've been putting out really great matches, really great shows. The vibe is just so different over there. I'm just wondering, like, did y'all hire somebody? Did y'all told Tony Khan to fall the fuck back and see what y'all can do without him? I don't know what it is, but it's just so much better. It's a breath of fresh air um, this past month or so, and I'm loving the direction that they're going in, and I'm just hoping that they continue to stay that way because... Um, you know, we just want pro wrestling to just go um, nowhere but up, and uh, I'm really excited with what we've been seeing in Ring of Honor. Now, your girl did double duty today and was watching the um, kickoff show for a WrestleMania that they had in Las Vegas. For the most part, I didn't watch. I only really watched towards the end when we had the, you know, little confrontation with Cody and, and, and The Rock and uh, and all of them, whatever. It was really interesting. Um, but Ring of Honor was just as interesting to me as well. Now, we started off with an amazing but short opening match. We had the Work Horsemen versus Cyrus uh, GT and Brillante RB. And it was so freaking good. First of all, Work Horsemen... Y'all look like y'all need some gold around your waist. Like, they were really putting in a lot of work. The teamwork was absolutely on point. And I'm loving the fact that we get a chance to see these CMLL guys coming in. Even on Ring of Honor, I wasn't really expecting that. But we've been seeing them across all AEW shows, so why not uh, with a Ring of Honor? Now, one thing I did notice here was that uh, this was from the collision show that they had on Saturday. They were somewhere in Texas near the border of Mexico, and they hungry as hell for pro wrestling over there, and that was a really, really loud crowd uh, for a collision, and they were just not shy to make some noise on Ring of Honor, too, so that made the vibe even better for the show. I just wish they get audience like this uh, more often. Now, like I said, Really great match. It was super short. I want to say slightly over five minutes. Um, it was just so good. It was like, man, you could have gone 10 minutes and I would have been absolutely um, satisfied. Um, I always say that Anthony Henry can probably do better on his own. Um, and I still kind of do feel that way. But man, he looks really, really great with J.D. Drake. They really complement each other. They obviously do take the win. And I'm happy with what we're getting um, with the tag division. Now that the Undisputed Kingdom has brought the tag titles back on home, everybody who is in a team is hungry for gold. Now after this, we do have Lexi Nair and Billy Starks. They are backstage. And uh, Lexi, she got a clipboard in her hand, and it is from Nyla Rose. Nyla Rose is basically saying, um, Billy, your ass not doing anything. Come meet me. And Nyla and Billy haven't crossed paths yet, but they do... They're not shy to want to meet each other, but none of them have actually initiated anything until Nyla sent over um, Lexi to go tell her. Now, Billy Stark said, hey, look, I am not hard to find. If she want to come find me, she going to come find me. And she walks off, and Lexi's like, holy shit. Now I got to go tell Nyla this. She knows that she could possibly feel the wrath of Nyla Rose. So now we got Lexi and Jerry Lynn. They go to go check on Dalton Castle. Dalton Castle has a friend that's to be going that's supposed to be going against Johnny TV. Now, if y'all know Johnny TV and Dalton Castle been beefing since even before uh, the uh, final battle pay per view, these guys have not gotten a chance to lock up in the ring and. Let me just say, uh, Dalton Castle is just going absolutely crazy because he wants to have a match with him. And the producers from Ring of Honor said, hey, if he don't want to fight you, Dalton, he don't have to fight you. So it's been like a, a whole thing of cat and mouse between the two of them. Now, he's saying that he got a friend that's going to go against Johnny TV, but we haven't actually seen this person. And I predicted that it's just going to be him in some kind of costume. And he's just trying to make it seem like there's somebody in the room with him when really ain't nobody in that room with him. Obviously, Taya and Johnny TV are talking shit about him, and that makes him even more angry and want his 
friend to go against Johnny TV later on. Now, we have Ethan Page versus Aaron Solo. And I don't know why, but I feel like we've seen this match recently. I'm not sure. But, um... Great matchup. And another thing that I've noticed too is that they're they're not trying to do really much of squash matches with Ring of Honor. That's something that I really noticed where I'm just like, okay, y'all not trying to uh, waste anybody's time. I feel like they're looking at it more as in everybody has something to offer in the ring. Whether it's going to be a short match or a long match, we're just not going to squash anybody. And that's one thing that I've seen that they've definitely laid low on these past few weeks. So they do have, um, you know, Aaron Solo get a chance to shine in this match. Um, however, Ethan Page takes a win. My complaint here is that Ethan Page is looking to get his hands on the TV title. Um, and Kyle Fletcher got this. And I'm talking about Kyle Fletcher, who is talented as fuck. And he will definitely um, not take it easy on someone like Ethan Page in the ring. And I just feel like Ethan Page is not bringing putting the ego out in all Ethan, uh, all ego Ethan Page, whatever the hell his name is. He's not doing enough. He was really going to have to push it in the personality department. He's really going to have to be a little bit more aggressive if he wants to go against someone like um, Kyle Fletcher. And I just feel like he's just not there yet. Now, right after this, we have KM and John Cruz versus Penta and El Hijo de Vikingo in a really great tag team match. And once again, they could just look at KM and John John Cruz and just put them in a squash situation. But instead, they actually treat them like fucking talent and let them have a decent match with these guys. It was actually a pretty good match. And I was just really surprised. I'm just like, whoa, no squash matches? They are really trying to give us better quality matches by making it, fe making it feel like everybody fucking matters in the ring. And I absolutely enjoy that. We already know that Penta's team's going to take the win. Um, and, and they do. Um, obviously, Alex, e Alex Ebrahentes is a ringside, and he's, um, you know, doing the typical hype man stuff. And I'm really glad that they're giving an opportunity for us to see, you know, like Penta. Penta has not been... On Ring of Honor since I think the Super Card of Honor uh, pay-per-view last year. Um, I, I think that's how long it's been. I'm not 100% sure. But um, it, I hope that we get a chance to see some people that are not necessarily using much on Ring of Honor. I mean, on AEW and feature them on uh, Ring of Honor. That will definitely help build some stars over there. Great tag team match. I can't wait to see what's going to happen with the tag division. Is Dalton Castle. I already told y'all that's what it was going to be. Um, Dalton Castle is wearing his usual gear. However, he got a, a, a coat on and he has this like pubic hair type of beard on his face. Um, you know, obviously it's like a wig or whatever. And he has a hat and glasses on and he's just thinking that no one's going to know it's him. And as soon as Johnny sees him, he's like, bitch, I know I didn't come out here for this. Now, Johnny's upset or whatever. He just walks off with Taya and... Dalton is desperate as fuck and he's like look I want to fight you and you won't fight me I'll do whatever it takes now Dalton is getting really riled up and he is actually like fuck it I want to fight you right now but then Johnny calls for security security goes in between them now I don't know if I mentioned this before but Johnny and um Dalton can't get into any physical altercation if uh, Dalton touches Johnny, uh, he will be suspended. So good thing the security guards were there to make sure that uh, they don't touch each other. Now Dalton is like, look, I will, I will do anything. I will give you anything uh, so that we can get in the ring and have a match. Now Johnny's thinking about it and Johnny's seeming like he about to answer him, but instead he said, bitch, I'll let you know next week. And another week is going to have to go by before, uh, you know, Dalton even gets close to getting in the ring with Johnny TV. Now, I'm probably not doing it justice talking about it, but it's been absolutely entertaining to see Taya and Johnny and uh, Dalton Castle having this, uh, you know, storyline. And they've been so committed and absolutely hilarious uh, throughout these um, like month or so that they've been um, beefing. And it's been so much fun. I absolutely enjoy it. Up next, we have Shane Taylor production. Shane Taylor gives us a good old-fashioned Black History Month promo, and then he goes on to say that if you are tired of being overlooked and underbooked, come join Shane Taylor Productions. And I am just like, where do I fucking sign up? 
Now, after this, we do have Arya Thorne versus Billy Starks. And I think this is my first time seeing Arya in um, Ring of Honor. And they actually let her have a great match with Billy. And this is what I was saying before, that they're not really focusing on doing these squash matches like they've been doing all fucking year long. By the way, this is episode 50, you guys. Almost a whole year of Ring of Honor. Um, so, you know, they're letting all the women look great, no matter if they're a part of Ring of Honor or not. I feel like they're definitely trying to make a change when it comes to women's wrestling in Ring of Honor. Now, they have a great matchup, but then here comes Nyla Rose, overdressed, um, in this, like, cowboy jacket, the, the pink cowboy bedazzled boots that are just looking absolutely insane, cowboy hat and everything. Um, Nyla's marching to the ring with a table in her hand and she's setting it up right beside the ring and obviously Billy she's distracted but she's still trying to keep her eye on her opponent she ends up winning via submission um, with this match but she is still keeping her eye out on Nyla Nyla is getting into a little confrontation with Billy but then all of the sudden here comes Athena music playing and Nyla turns around, she's still on the apron, waiting for Athena to come out, and nothing happens. And honestly, I thought it was Nyla who got the music to play on purpose just to, you know, get everybody all upset. But then, our minion overlord, Athena, actually comes from behind and ends up pushing Nyla onto the table. It was beautiful. Loved it. These girls, man, I can't wait to see what they do with this feud. It's absolutely beautiful. Up next, we have the ladies in a four corner survival match. We had Trisha Dora, Layla Hirsch, Kiera Hogan, and Diamante uh, going, uh, well, one on one, on one, on one. Um, really great match with these ladies. I am loving the way that they're building these girls. We have Rachel Ellering, who's useless, um, ringside, obviously, there for Layla Hirsch. Um, ends up pretty much costing her the match. Now, Diamante, she does cheat to win. But Rachel kind of helps by being a little bit distracting to Layla ringside. And honestly, I know they really trying to push this little storyline between Layla and Rachel. It's just not appealing to me. Um, but this was a really great matchup with the ladies. I was so surprised to see um, the one I was rooting for to, to win this match was Trisha Dora. Trisha Dora has only won four matches and lost, I believe this has 17 matches. Like, come on now. Um, definitely one of the most talented girls on the roster. And for whatever reason, that amount of losses is really disturbing to me. Now, I, I, I do enjoy all these girls. We don't know when the TV title tournament is going to start. Tony Khan, at some point, you're going to announce it. Um, but I'm not going to trip about it because they're actually building up these girls in their own individual ways. And um, everyone is looking great. Even if they're taking L's, they are, um, you know, putting their all out in the ring. And I absolutely appreciate that. I do feel the difference um, that they're trying to make when it comes to women's wrestling in Ring of Honor. Now, we do have Shane Taylor, Lee Moriarty, and Cole Carter and Griff Garrison versus the Infantry and the Iron Savages. Now, earlier in that night, I forgot to say this. It was like way in the beginning of the show. Um, Griff Garrison, Cole Carter, they attack and... Um, Damn, they attack in, in Helico, or someone who's supposed to be in Helico. They attack him like crazy, beat the fuck out of him, and then they take the mask off, which was absolutely insane. Uh, but it actually turned out not to be Serpentico. I guess Serpentico was in catering, and whoever it was that was walking around with his mask um, obviously was not him. Um, they also do beat up on in Helico too. And I'm looking at Griff Garrison, I'm like, Griff Garrison. Uh, over a month ago, if somebody would have told me that this was going to be you, I wouldn't even have believed it. He has absolutely made so many changes, and he's looking great. Hey, I'm saying now, I'm looking at him. I'm looking at Lexus King over there in a, um, WWE, and I can I can see Griff Garrison possibly going further um, than uh, Lexus King. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not lying. Now, anyway, um, they have a great matchup, eight-man tag match. Uh, Maria Canellas obviously is ringside. And like I said, the difference that I'm seeing with Griff is absolutely night and day. I absolutely love it. He's bringing that aggression that I really, really, really appreciate. He is coming off to be the heel that I've been hoping that he was going to be. And I think he's outshining Cole Carter a bit, which is um, a little surprising for me to say. Lee Moriarty does take the win for his team. And um, after Shane Taylor Productions, they make it to the back. 
here is Angelico and Serpentico. No, actually Serpentico. He comes back out by himself and attack Griff and Cole Carter. He obviously really, really upset about them trying to attack him earlier that night. Now, I know they've been having somewhat of a story with these two teams for the past few weeks. It's okay. I don't mind. But I'm glad to see that they're doing something and trying to do something with all these guys and trying to put some storylines out there. I give it B for effort. Up next, we have Lee Johnson versus Gravity. Now, neither of these two do it for me, but they do have a pretty great match. And uh, Lee Johnson does take the win. I feel like they looking at him maybe to be one of those guys to go for the TV title. Um, I guess I get it. I feel like he works well with some people, and then he doesn't work well with other people. He has zero personality, and really, I'm over it. Um, whatever. Moving on. Ty Valkyrie versus Killer Kate. This wasn't a squash, um, but obviously this was for Ty to look great. It was all right. Now, main event, we have Jack Cartwheel, Willie Mack, Commander, and our boy AR Fox is back in the building in a four corner survival match. Really, really great match. I really enjoyed it, especially for a um, main event. Now, Jack Cartwheel. Jack Hartwell, every single time, he blows my mind. And I, I know it. Every time I see Jack Hartwell, I'm getting mine. I'm I'm definitely getting mine. This guy is just, every single time, he does it for me. I love it. You know, super, super entertaining. He's going to have to do something about that ring gear. Uh, but he's, he's just on point in the ring, and I love his confidence. He's very fun. Um, never heard him speak, but he is just so amazing. Now, A.O. Fox in this match, killing it. Willie Mack, in my opinion, I think I enjoyed him the most out of everyone in this match. Um, but who takes the win? Commander. I forgot this bitch was even in the match. And just to make matters worse, um, after Commander wins, even Caprice is on commentary saying, I forgot Commander was in this match because he hardly was in it. All the other three guys were putting in work and look really, really great. And out of the blue, here's Commander taking the win. Like, what the fuck? What the fuck? This is the same thing they did last week with Lee Johnson when Lee Johnson was barely in the match and he ended up taking the win during the main event last week. And and they they pretty much ran that same scenario back again for this week. And I just did not like that. Um, the match was really, really great. And I enjoyed everything we got to see from these guys. Willie Mack, um, don't count this guy out, man. I know some people look at him and just probably think that he's not that great. He's amazing. And then for me, I think he was... He performed the best in this match to me. Um, and, you know, maybe I might be biased, but I would have loved to see A.R. Fox take the win, especially after he's been gone for so long. A.R. Fox, where the fuck you been? He is so amazing in the ring. Now, I'm not going to lie. I was a little upset about how that match ended. And I'm thinking, all right, the show is over. But then they said, uh, we got some words from our main overlord, Athena. Athena cuts a promo on Nyla Rose. And, you know, basically letting her know that she's back and um, she's running things up in here. So whatever uh, uh, she thought that she was doing while Athena's been gone, it's over now. Athena's taken over. Now, just when she finished to cut her promo, we have uh, Nyla attacks her from behind and slams her through a table. And then she picks up an orange and bit into that shit. Yes, with the orange peel on it still. Who does that? Now, look. Everything that we've been seeing with the women's division have absolutely improved. I love how, despite us not having a world champion over there, Athena really is the world champion in Ring of Honor. And I do feel like they've taken so much, um, you know, thought into what they're doing with her. And she's been absolutely amazing in Ring of Honor. And now we have someone like Nyla Rose, who was definitely, um, you know putting a lot of pressure um, onto all the women in Ring of Honor, and that's helping giving us a really great feud with Athena and Nyla, and I can't wait to see where it goes from here. I definitely would recommend, you know, getting your little subscription. Try it out for a month and see what it is that we've been seeing uh, with Ring of Honor for about two months now. They've been really consistent. I really see that they're trying. I really wish I could say the same thing for AEW Dynamite this past few weeks, but guys, thanks so much for watching my review. 
you. It's been so great to see them actually, I don't know if they're watching my reviews or anything, um, but they're definitely trying to make some changes and that I can appreciate. I'll see you for Rampage.